The number one question I've been getting from people since patch 1.3 is skill up. God damn it. When are you going to run the numbers on the Deadeye gear set? Well, the numbers have been run and the results are in. And in this video, I'm going to break down in great detail whether or not this set is worth using. There is a lot of information on this. So uh, this was actually the most complex set to properly theory craft out. So to summarize the key points, I put them all up on screen for you now. But stick around if you want to hear all of the juicy detail. Enjoy. Deadeye, man, this one nearly killed me. The complexities and the variables associated with this set are many, and it's no surprise that the community is still very cautious about whether or not this set is worth investing in. For those that don't know, patch 1.3 introduced a number of new gear sets, and this set, the Deadeye, is one aimed at those preferring to use marksman rifles over any other weapon type, since the set brings you absolutely no benefit whatsoever if you aren't using a marksman rifle. So be aware that this is not the sort of set that you can splice into other gear sets to expect some sort of benefit. For those that are wondering where I got this, I got a full set of 268 from three runs of Heroic Underground, which funnily enough, I was running with Massive's community manager, Hamish Bode. So for those of you that are wondering how to get your hands on this set, the answer is simple, just group up with Hamish. Now let's start by exploring each of the set bonuses and determine whether or not they are any good. First up, the two piece bonus provides 20% critical hit damage when using a marksman rifle. I did confirm that this was an additive rather than a multiplicative value. So we can cross that one off our list. So is this any good? Well, on its own, this would not be so great for a marksman rifle because we don't build for crit on marksman rifles. We build for headshot damage because their accuracy, stability, range, and base head shot damage mean that they're really built for that. We build for crit on other weapons, such as the SMG. So since our base crit chance on a marksman rifle is quite low, we actually get very little benefit from critical hit damage. Or at least, you know, we, we get way less of it than we do stacking headshot damage or actual crit. Of course, this two piece is designed to synergize with the set's four piece bonus, but we'll come back to that point in a bit. Next up is the three piece bonus, which is 40% initial bullet stability. I have to say that this is one of the worst three piece bonuses in the game. I recently did a very detailed breakdown of the three types of stability in the game and initial bullet stability is by far the worst of those three. In short, initial bullet stability reduces your recoil on the very first shot that you fire while the weapon is at rest, which works really well for slow rate of fire marksman rifles like an M44 or for burst fire weapons like the foul assault rifle. But on pretty much anything else, it's totally useless. The ironic thing about this gear set is that it's actually actually aiming to facilitate a very fast rate of fire style of marksman rifle play by allowing you to chain body shots without the need for precision headshots. But this form of stability benefits only the first bullet you fire and then nothing after that. It's an utterly pointless addition to this set and it really should have been replaced by accuracy or horizontal stability, two forms of weapon precision that this gear set desperately needs. All right, the big one, the four piece bonus, it reads, while not scoped, critical hit chance of marksman rifles is increased to 100%, but headshot damage bonus is removed. So what does this all mean? Well, to be super clear, scoped means actually scoped, not aiming down sights. Aiming down sights is when I hit the trigger or the right mouse button to bring the weapon up to my shoulder, where scoping is when I click the thumbstick or press tab to zoom in and look down the weapon scope. When I have this four piece bonus and I'm either hip firing or aiming down sights, I get 100% critical hit chance. Every bullet I fire will crit, no exceptions, but I immediately lose any headshot damage bonus. So if I shoot something in the head, it's actually exactly the same as me shooting it in the body. If I'm aiming down the weapon scope, I get my headshot damage back, but I lose my 100% crit chance and I just return to it being a normal rate of crit. So that's how this mechanic works, but why has it been designed this way? Well, the core assumption sitting behind the design of this set is that if I can get my critical hit damage high enough, I will do more damage firing at the body than I would by lining up a headshot. In theory, this means that I'm able to fire faster and more accurately since the need for precision is reduced, which in theory should net me more DPS than if I had the same head shot damage, but had to line up headshots. This is essentially the design intent behind this gear set. It sounds pretty damn cool, but the fact is the concept immediately falls apart when you begin examining how this actually plays out in game. And when you look closely and analyze the numbers that are driving its performance. Two things really bring down the core 
core design principles of this set. Firstly, I really don't feel like I get to fire that much faster when I'm aiming for body shots versus headshots because the potency of things like accuracy mods, the accurate talent and the capable talent all combine to bring me to a very respectable rate of fire when I am aiming to chain headshots. Yes, it's not quite as easy as just shooting at the body, but to be honest with you, it's pretty close to it. And while this can be a different situation between PC and console, where it's actually much harder to aim on a console, I don't think that I'm getting significantly higher RPM out of this set by virtue of the fact that I only need to aim at the body. Secondly, and most importantly, I give up on critical headshots. With a fully stacked pulse in my group, I get 40% crit plus some change if I've modded and geared for any crit chance. With an M1A and around 3k firearms, one crit headshot will do around 520k damage before things like enemy armor damage, damage to elites, tactical pulse, and smart cover are applied. Compare that to a body shot crit of 180k on a perfect, fully stacked Deadeye build, and you're starting to see why Deadeye isn't all that great. With the huge base headshot damage of a marksman rifle and the massive amount of free crit I can get from Pulse, I essentially get to double dip on both crit hit damage and headshot damage in a way that I can never do when I'm using the Deadeye set. Sure, I can scope in when I'm using the Deadeye to get both the crit damage and the headshot damage, but at that point, I may as well be using a completely different gear set since I've literally disabled the four-piece bonus by zooming in. Plus, I've sacrificed so much headshot damage and I have almost no base crit chance because I didn't build for any crit along the way, you know, so I'm essentially behind the eight ball on that one as well. The design of this set is fine and very interesting and it's a great concept that ultimately is incompatible with the way that this game calculates DPS. I've been very vocal for some time that I think allowing headshots to crit actually really sucks because it just stacks damage numbers in a way that's way, way too high for doing something that actually isn't particularly difficult, which is landing headshots. I think that if the critical headshot damage mechanic didn't exist, Exist, this set would actually be really interesting and allow you to true choose where you want to focus crit damage or headshot damage. The problem with this game is that it currently lets you do both. And what's worse is that you can do it with a bonus 52% damage from Century's Call, but we'll come back to that later. The final thing that makes this set really awkward at the moment is how hard it is to gear for it. The absolute maximum amount of critical hit damage that you can have from anything in the game is 324%. And just to confirm, there is no crit damage cap Right, it's just that 324% is what's actually possible given our current item budgets. In order to reach this number, which is the number I've used in my DPS analysis, I'm gonna break down for you just how much I have to do slash sacrifice. First up, on your weapon mods, you're aiming for 38% crit on your muzzle and your mag. This means that your mag, you're actually giving up 13% weapon damage, uh, which when I ran my te test equated to about the same DPS as if I was running critical hit damage on your mag. So it's actually actually not a big loss there. Secondly, we need deadly on our weapon to bring us that extra 29% critical hit damage. Of course, getting deadly on our marksman rifle is far easier said than done, so be prepared to miss out on this one unless you happen to luck out. Next up, we need a pair of gloves, but not just any gloves. We need them to have both critical hit damage and marksman rifle damage if they were going to be properly set up for this. And since we can only recalibrate one stat, chasing the perfect set of gloves can be a real pain. Next, we need 20% uh, critical hit damage on our backpack and our knee pads. But the awesome thing about that is that this is actually your major stat slot. So chasing critical hit damage here means that you aren't rolling for armor, which is super critical at the moment given how much damage NPCs are currently dealing. Hitting your armor cap without these two slots is still possible, but it makes it a hell of a lot harder. Next, we need the two-piece Hunter's Faith for the 20% critical hit damage bonus that it provides. Hunter's Faith is not a particularly easy set to get hold of, since you typically need to do a heroic clear sky incursion, which again is anything but a cakewalk given how much NPCs are dealing damage at the moment and how high their health pools are. And when you do get lucky enough to get a, a Hunter's Faith drop, this could be the wrong stats or it could have the wrong, you know, in, in the wrong slot for you or all sorts of things, right? So it's not easy to get this. And personally, I just write this one off instead of chasing that because uh, you're probably just gonna wanna find the critical hit damage elsewhere. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, we need a 100% critical hit damage pulse with 100% uptime on that pulse, which means we either need to 
be at 42k skill power ourselves, which obviously takes a huge toll in our toughness and firearms, or we need to run with someone who is bringing that pulse, which obviously we can't always do. Not having a proper pulse with this build hurts it massively. And while I wouldn't recommend that you run this set in any case, I definitely would not recommend you running it without the right pulse because the DPS loss is just too hard. So that's what it takes to make all of your gear work correctly for a maximum of 324%. And in my view, gearing for this set requires a level of sacrifice that is totally disproportionate to the value this set provides. What value is that you ask? Well, let's take a look at the numbers. Now, as always, the workings for all of this are in the description below, but don't worry too much about that as I'll be explaining it all here. First up, I want to make clear that on the weapon, on the matter of which weapon you're using, we need to use an M1A for this set. An SVD already has the stability and accuracy that it needs to hit headshots quickly and easily, so it doesn't need the crutch of aiming for body shots. The M1A is a far more difficult weapon to handle because of its reticle bloom. So in theory, being able to aim for the body with an M1A is a much better deal. The M1A also hits a lot harder than the SVD per bullet, so the added benefit that this set provides is far better utilized on an M1A than it is on an SVD. So yep, only use it uh, with an M1A, that's what Deadeye is for. And for anyone running about M44s, no, this set is not for that because they can't fire fast enough to benefit from the crit and it's already easy enough to chain headshots at the maximum rate of fire. As for gear, I'm using what I'd call a baseline DPS set for this, which is essentially around 3.4K firearms, 220% bonus headshot damage, 10% base crit chance, and an average pulse bringing an extra 23% crit and 75% crit, but only for 50% of the uptime, because again, it's a base pulse. It's for someone that's not running a lot of electronics. For the Deadeye comparison, we essentially lose all of our bonus headshot damage and we replace it with around 260% critical hit damage since our pulse isn't maxed out and it's also not got that 100% uptime that we need. So under these conditions, we get to a total DPS of around 285K with the baseline set and around 223K with our Deadeye set. And that's just to be clear, a perfectly rolled, perfectly stacked Deadeye set that we're talking about. So remember that our baseline set actually had no set bonuses active whatsoever. There was just raw stats. There's no other set bonuses. And already, you know, we can see that, uh, that the baseline set is doing more DPS than the Deadeye set is um, straight out of the gate. So obviously that's, um, that's a little bit concerning. Now, if we assume that we are running with someone that is giving us a maxed out pulse, so we don't need to sacrifice any of our firearms, the baseline set reaches 456K DPS, where the Deadeye sits at a flaccid 264K, a measly 40%, a 40K increase on its previous DPS of 223K. So you want to know why the, the baseline DPS set has gone up like 200K where the Deadeye has only gone up like 40K? It's because with all of that extra crit chance and crit hit damage that I've got from that pulse, critical headshots now account for a staggering 71% of my total damage on that baseline build, right? The Deadeye gets none of that whatsoever because you don't get any headshot damage when you are using your Deadeye set in the way that it's intended to be used. Now, here's where things get really gross. Now, I know a lot of people don't like it when I go on about Century's Call, but honestly, the more I look at it, the more convinced I become that this set must be deleted from the game or it needs to be nerfed to the ground. Where things like Predator's Mark bring you an extra 20 to 30% damage, you know, just to you, that's just to you, right? Or Strikers brings you an average of around 20% damage, again, just for you. Century's Call brings a staggering 52% don't bonus damage to you and your team before we think about the 20, the 30% damage to elites or the 20% uh, extra headshot damage that it provides. The Deadeye set gear can push out a total of around 433k DPS if you add in Tactical Pulse and Smart Cover, right? That's the Deadeye set, 433k. You want to know how much DPS I can get out of 5 piece Century with Savage Gloves at the exact same gear score? 
1.58 million. That is literally 1.1 million more DPS just from one gear set when I take into account the 30% headshot damage and the 20% damage to elites and the 52% damage to me. And that isn't even including the bonus damage that I bring to my team. It blows my mind that this gear set still exists in the way that it does. And I make this point here because when we talk about gear sets, obviously, we want to analyze them both for their own merits and also we need to analyze them comparatively. And unquestionably, there is no way that I would use this set in any instance. And even if they did buff it, they would literally need to make it four times stronger than it currently is to get to the point that's as strong as Century's Call. And then they'd also need to make sure that that same benefit is also provided to my team members. Now, if that doesn't sound ridiculous to you and completely off the charts, unbalanced, then in my view, then absolutely nothing will. Lastly, I've heard a lot of people talk about how this is a really great set in PvP and uh, having tried it myself, I'm really unconvinced. I mean, like, yeah, sure, I can chunk some opponents really well, uh, but most of the footage that I've seen for people sort of like espousing the value of this set of PvP, they've been dropping their targets stupidly quickly. Like, obviously, they're just dropping targets that are rocking around in like 300k uh, toughness. So, I, I, I've tested it myself. Yeah, it hits fairly hard, but so does a proper, you know, G36. Predator's Mark build, so does a shotgun to the face with Century's Call, so does like a proper stri a striker's setup when you get a good, uh, a good line of sight on your target. Like all of these other sets provide a lot of benefit and I'm just really unconvinced that uh, this set finds value in PvP because I just think the Marksman Rifle is not valuable in that context. You're way better off using far more versatile weapons like SMGs and Assault Rifles than you are Marksman Rifles. So guys, that's my review of Deadeye. At this point, we have to say that I think Massive are simply not running the numbers on their gear sets in the right way. I mean, a simple modeling of the DPS potential of this set would have immediately shown you that it would do less damage than a baseline set if you assume a reasonable, a reasonable headshot percentage of around 75%. Things like adding initial bullet stability to a set that is designed for rapid fire add further injury to insult. You know, add this to the likes of the Four Piece Hunter's Faith, Four Piece Final Measure, the entire Blind set, the entire Firecrest set, and the Nomad set, and there's very clearly a worrying trend here. The concepts that underpin each of these gear sets are really excellent, and I love them, and I would love to be able to use these because I actually think they're extremely well designed. But their numbers and their mechanics are completely off, rendering each of these sets totally useless. And further to this, Century, Tactician, and Striker continue to rule the roost because they provide just too many stats. So the balance just isn't there at either end of the spectrum, and I hope that Massive invest heavily in refreshing these sets and and Deadeye to bring them to the point where they are competitive options for us. For now guys, please don't ever use Deadeye. You will literally do less DPS than if you used nothing at all. Guys, that's it from me. Uh, another long review, but I do hope you found it useful. If you did, remember to like the video and if uh, you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, uh, please do so. There's plenty more Division Theory Crafting content on the way. That's kind of my thing. Finally, if you'd like to help me go full time on YouTube, you can actually do that by whitelisting my channel channel if you happen to run ad blocker, but only if you feel like my content is good enough. Uh, this week, I'll be doing a complete review of the PP19, so be sure to keep an eye out for that one. Until then, guys, take good care, and I will see you in the dark zone. Bye-bye.